um last time we discussed about the ble which was bluetooth low energy and we uh, explained how exactly it works what is the bluetooth stack and all those things we uh, really had a great time there uh, it was a learning for me as well now this time it is going to be a little bit traditional uh, we need to understand wifi which is the most traditional and frequently used transport protocol and iot never uh, leaves without wifi to be very precise and we are going to handle li-fi after wifi uh, first let us handle uh, wifi very clearly in the session which can uh, lead path to the uh, li-fi session which is going to be done little later so what is it all about uh, we all have uh, some basic understanding or some basic uh, idea about what is wifi so it's, it becomes easy for anybody to teach it is based on ieee 802.11 spec ieee 802.11 it is a, a lan for in building network connectivity so essentially we are talking about lan which is local area network so it can go at few hundreds of feet maybe 250 300 feet is what i am going to think about if it is a most efficient lan uh, i am not going to think about uh, sending the data or getting connectivity established for a longer distance wifi is expanded as wireless fidelity data rate is approximately uh there is a, a difference of opinion with respect to multiple articles that i read some say that it is 100 some say that it is 50 some say that it is 54 but predominantly it is 54 mb per second coverage distance i'll talk about it little later where i have mentioned this clearly and everything every uh, component that you have in hand uh, be it a laptop be it a mobile phone be it a pda everything wherever you go it has got an inbuilt wifi support so you need not have to really buy some new ic to integrate it with the component to make it a part of your wifi network even washing machines kettle uh, your geyser all those things are coming with wifi support right now and it's a great feature so wifi is a term uh, for uh, certain types of wireless area network please understand it is not for all wireless networks it is for certain types of wireless area network that come under the umbrella of 802.11 family please understand there are so many wireless standards available there are so many wireless specifications available all of them cannot be rated as wifi whichever follows 802.11 could be regarded as the one called as wifi 802.11 is all completely created this complete wifi related stuff is created managed maintained upgraded uh by a society called as wifi alliance uh, they are the uh, people they are the group of people who really sit finalize what can be a standard and they certify that these are all the components that can get into uh, the wifi setup and most important uh, most important point to understand is the alliance actually defines wifi in a very neat way they say that wireless area network products um, they 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 define it very clearly that uh, whichever product that supports IEEE 802.11 will become wifi component they say they they spot it very clear and most important point that we need to understand is anything that comes under 802.11 specification can be regarded as wifi that's the point that we need to take from this slide and next point initially uh, it was only 802.11 b that was supported now any product under 802.11 actually is taken into wifi picture it's always important to define anything when we go into it so let's define wifi what is it it's a technology yes of course it's a technology that permits an electronic equipment or a device to transfer data using radio waves over a computer network including high speed internet connections that's all so i'm going to transfer data using radio waves and that is what is regarded as wifi simple it can work with 250 to uh, 300 feet away from the access point at indoor setup about 1000 feet in the outdoor setup because they could be powerful with more distance which means i am far away from the access point or my equipment might not have that much speed and capacity to really cope i may have a uh, joltering in the uh, performance that i really feel with we could have felt this right when i am very close to the access point the network connectivity will be much more faster when i'm away from the access point the network connectivity will be periodical and it could be slow as well so that's what i'm telling it here so the major point that we need to understand is the definition in this particular slide what is it whenever we transfer data using radio waves we can refer it as wifi 
and it includes high speed internet connection that's the point that we need to take now what is the hotspot we have been hearing this term hotspot for the past almost 5 years very uh, very famous term is hotspot so we need to understand what is it when we go to airport when we go to hotels when we go to restaurants when we uh, go to schools or anywhere there would be a facility for you to use um, wifi networks there and you will be given communal access which means shared access would be given to you and these locations are literally called as hotspot uh, so when i have a um, facility for me to be uh, connected to a, a wifi network i can call that location a hotspot let's let's make it simple and there could be a charge for it uh, there could be a hourly uh, rate of charge for it uh, there could be uh, leasing for it all those things could have happened and there could be free as well indian railway stations are now providing you a very good internet facility and that's free they provide it for 45 minutes or one hour something like that and that's free now multiple hotspots when you interconnect under network access point is called as hot zone the term is important it's hot zone right is it 100% safe sir no you are actually uh, vulnerable to be attacked so there are a lot of uh, illegal users who can really enter into the wifi zone and they can even steal your data they can make sure that they can trouble you so all these are possibilities and uh, the most important term is war driving war driving uh, that is nothing but the action of locating and exploiting the security exposed wireless lans there are wireless lans which has some problem already i go exploit it i call it war, war driving that's a very important term you guys need to remember it and what can be done sir is can we can we not use it we are using it every now and then right can can we not i mean do we have any uh, security or special measure to protect ourselves from this yes there are encryption standards available uh, there are uh, uh, recent protected areas wifi protected areas wpa available and ipsec that's that's becoming very uh, famous because ip6 ipv6 supports ipsec by itself and vpns vpns are the ones that most of the industries use all these can be used to avoid damages to avoid uh, us from getting caught into the uh, total uh, trouble so that's that's the way we need to save ourselves now advantages when we quickly see wire free yes it's wifi so it's wire free easy access yes there is no great difficulty in someone getting educated about how to use wifi it's easy and automatic allowance of usage which means i do not have to really go ahead and struggle to get connected that so it's going to be pretty easy if i have credentials with me 802.11b 802.11g support frequency hopping that's a very important term frequency hopping and most importantly i am in a particular wifi network i go to the next one am i permitted to go yes you are permitted to go and you will still be connected there it's called roaming roaming is permitted disadvantages uh it's it may not really cover a large range or m- range of data transfer is medium and most importantly the distance that it covers is also minimal and that's fine because it is local area network and uh, signal quality uh, is a major concern with respect to wifi because when i'm very close to the access point i'll definitely get a very good quality but when i move away from the access point my quality gets tampered and uh security vulnerabilities are getting exposed day by day so that's a major concern about it now it's time for us to understand the architectural uh, details of uh, wifi uh, which means what are all the terms that you need to understand with respect to wifi and it's easy and important as well so uh, the architecture is the one that we need to really uh, understand uh, there are some terms that we need to understand with respect to architecture the first term that i would like you to understand is station what do you mean by a station any component that can connect into wireless medium in a network is a station that's all each station will have a wireless network interface card wireless network interfaces which is called wnacs and they can be further categorized as access point and clients so what is a station a station is a collection of access point plus multiple clients together any of the component which is capable of getting into a wireless medium getting connected into a wireless medium we can call it a station now access point what is an access point this is a very simple term we need to understand it proper it is a transceiver transmitter and receiver which transmits the data between the wired and wireless networking a wifi network need not be 100% wireless there could be some components still which are connected wired okay so we need to understand that this access points shall be capable of transmitting data 
between wired and wireless networks. 100% if it is wireless, that's well and good, that's fine. But still, there are chances where we may have to still go with wired network at some places. Now, access points are mostly connected with Ethernet. Uh, this is traditional way of doing it. Now, there are multiple access points which have come, multiple technologies have come. So, we could slightly differ this term sometime in future. One access point can be regarded as working perfectly fine when it can support a, at least a very small group of uh, components in it. If, if at least say about 3 or 4 or 5 or something like that, if multiple components can come together to form a, a small wireless network, then I can say that yeah, this is a great access point, this manages it. And 100 feet is the distance that I can really uh, cover with a single access point and that's why we have multiple access points in the uh, public Wi-Fi stations or railway stations or wherever you go, wherever there is a public Wi-Fi support, we have this. Now client, what is a client? A client is the one who gets connected, simple. Again, a system uh, that accesses a service made by, uh, services made available by a server. I have a server, the server provides you a facility, you acquire the facility, you use that facility and that is called a client. Simple, my mobile phone is a client. I get connected to the Wi-Fi network, I am a client. I use the services offered by the Wi-Fi, I am a client. Simple. Now what is the next term that we need to understand? Bridge. Bridge is nothing but a connector. What is a bridge? A bridge actually connects two ends of a river, two ends of a, a lake. That's exactly what we are talking about. One end of a lake may uh, talk only French, another end of the lake may talk only uh, say Hindi and I need to connect these two people. So that there I use a bridge. So bridge is a connector that will establish connection between Ethernet and different wireless networks. That's all. I am going to connect to a different set of components and for that I need a bridge. These four terms are very basic and very fundamental. And apart from that we have another two terms that we need to know. One is BSS, another one is ESS. The left hand side whatever I am moving now is BSS. This is also a BSS. But when you can see that I made an arrow here and that arrow is referring as ESS. What is BSS? BSS is basic service set. A set of all stations. Listen the term stations. What is a station? I defined that in the previous slide. A set of all stations that can communicate within each other. Now these all can talk to each other. A can talk to B, B can talk to C, C can talk to D. All these which can talk to each other can be regarded as basic service set. Each basic service set will have a unique, unique BSS ID. Please remember, now this is one BSS altogether. This is one BSS altogether and they can talk within each other and they will have a unique ID. Now what is extended service set? When this BSS talks to this one, I can regard it as extended service set. Now there are three types of configurations that you can follow for a Wi-Fi network. First one is infrastructure mode. What do you mean by infrastructure mode? It's a very simple permanent connection. I am not going to change anything. I am going to have a central access point. The access point has got a very high power. It will have wide area coverage and my clients will get connected to it. This is highly stable network, no unpredictability, no change in location, no ad hoc mode problems. It is not temporary, it is going to be permanent. So whenever the infrastructure is well available for you, whenever you can make it permanent, I can call it infrastructure mode. Ad hoc network. What do you mean by ad hoc network? The term itself is pretty clear. The term itself is pretty clear and And you can see that, uh, what do you mean by ad hoc, ad hoc is temporary. Um, so each node here, in this ad hoc, there is, there is nothing permanent in ad hoc node. So that means that um, each node will have a, a capacity, each node will be participating in this entire data transfer. Each node is capable of doing that and they can transfer data to any other node. It is, it is nothing like I will have a, a central access point and it is highly decentralized now. I do not have called as something called as the central uh, access point and here every node is capable of transferring data. Now that's the most important point. What is access point? I defined it some time back. So, so we do not have a necessity or we do not have a depend, dependency created towards a uh, central access point in this case. And all the devices are certainly equal. All the devices are definitely equal and this does not need an access point at all. So when you do not have an access point requirement, you tell me it is extremely easy to connect or set up a network and whenever it is small network which is going to be temporary i do not require an access point and it is going to be with just two three laptops i can set up this network it's going to be very easy but the only point that i need to understand with this ad hoc mode of setup is that if all the devices are 
trying to connect to the same frequency then there could be an interference that's going to be uh, pretty difficult and the chains of computer will be used in the adduct network for example i have five computers okay my data transfer will happen from computer a to computer e i do not know the path that the data goes it may go from a to b to c to d to e which causes significant delay so this is the disturbance of adduct network but it is useful for setting up temporary networks and it does not demand you to really go ahead with a, a great infrastructure stuff given to it mixer network any form of network which takes the features from infrastructure as well as adduct is referred as mixer network mode now quickly we need to talk about another topic um, how do you access what are all the access methods available or supported for wifi the first one and the prominent one is csma bar ca what is csma bar ca csma is carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance this should not be confused with csma bar cd collision detection happens only after the collision occurs collision avoidance happens well before the collision happens it will be avoided so the term is very clear here collision avoidance is not the same as collision detection whenever one station or one component want to transfer data in a network there will not be any problem if it is only one which is going to transfer data it is not going to be any problem because there is no other person to transfer data it can transfer data and it can peacefully come out and if there are multiple stations working say two stations they are going to transfer data both of them wants to transfer the data at the same point in time then comes the problem who will transfer first can they transfer simultaneously if they transfer simultaneously will it not be a collision so we need to really understand that and then provide a method to avoid this collision now how do we handle it simple this is done with a protocol called as csma bar c i'll first check if the channel is free if the channel is free the packet will be sent if the channel is not free which means that if some other packets are going already into it i'll wait for a period of no activity and then i'll check it again for it being free once i understand that it is free i'll try to send it again that's all and this is called as this waiting time is called as back of factor and there will be a counter also available called as back of counter and please understand there are two terms available now one is back of factor another one is back of counter the back of factor is nothing but the wait time the back of counter is a counter that's it if the channel is clear which means if the channel is available and when the back of counter reaches zero the node can transfer packet which means the channel is available the counter is also zero if channel is not clear and the back of counter is zero which means the back of counter has got no value in it but the channel is not available the back of counter value will be set again which means you are literally asked to wait for some more time that's it this is how it works and i normally teach this in this way we go to uh, buses in india this is the method that we used to uh, really get into the town bus stands to really get get a seat in the bus uh, we will stand outside the bus we will see if there are available seats av- seats available because there is no pre reservation here in local buses i'll take a kerchief i'll throw it into the through the window into the bus the kerchief will be there and that acts as a reservation point now if some other person wants to travel in the same seat he will come and see that there is a kerchief already available so he cannot travel he has to wait for some time until the time i get out of the seat or i get down from the place that i get down to the place where i need to travel now i threw my kerchief i have another kerchief under my kerchief which means that somebody else has already put a kerchief i need to wait so i need to wait for a period of no activity again i need to back up factor will come in picture so this simple example of reserving or catching a place in a bus can be referred as csma that's it so overall we have just understood about the complete idea about the uh, wifi the wifi architecture the components and its special features most importantly csma bar ca please understand csma bar cd is not same as csma bar ca they are different and i hope i gave you the inputs that are important to understand the fundamentals we will come back to you with lifi material shortly lively thank you very much for following my channel i'll come back to you with more content shortly thank you